Hi everyone, Az here from Heel vs. Babyface. Fandom is such a powerful thing. I absolutely love The Witcher series. What you see on the screen right now. The first time I came across it was actually The Witcher 2. And I was blown away by the game itself. I didn't believe that you could be tret like an actual adult in a game. Normally, mature-rated titles treat you maturely to a certain degree, and then suddenly, once some mature material comes along, you get tret like a 13 or 14-year-old, because that's who they really think their audience is. But with The Witcher, it wasn't the case, and The Witcher 2 took me to a believable world, a fantasy world, but a believable world with incredibly individual voices. Every single solitary character felt different, and they felt so unbelievably real and relatable. And then when The Witcher 3 came along, in my opinion, it's the greatest game of all time. It is just sublime. The incredible vast open areas everywhere you go to explore the small towns you come across again even the peasants in the village all seem to have their own unique voice and when i say that i mean they come across as individual people the story itself is full of political intrigue backstabbing betrayal you have great characters great loves great danger you have the family element it seems to tick every single solitary box and most importantly didn't patronize you wasn't condescending and didn't try and force real world political ideology into the game no it let the political nature of the current universe shine through very much like game of thrones it is, in my view, the greatest franchise ever made. And I've got models and statues and collector's editions and everything because I am so invested in this universe. And so when we hear about franchises like this that we all love, and I guarantee there is hundreds of thousands of you out there that feel the same way about me as I do The Witcher, or about another uh, fantastical hero, Batman, Superman, Captain Marvel. <laughs> what are you kidding? When you hear that they're either going to be put on the big screen or the small screen, you tend to get very excited indeed. But at the same time, there is an air of caution too, because you are so invested in these franchises and probably have been for numerous years that the one thing that you truly want more than anything else is for the franchise to be done justice. That you can sit down and watch the show and say to yourself, do you know what? I think they did a really good attempt at bringing this universe to life. While hopefully giving them leeway and understanding that there's got to be some flexibility when you're creating a show because it's not just the fandom that they're trying to appeal to it's normies as well and again this is why a series like game of thrones season eight aside has been so popular with people because it's appealed to the book readers and it's appealed to normies alike because it ticks good boxes the fantasy element of it romance element of it the political side of it the you know the whole job lot. Now, we have seen with other franchises that this hasn't been done particularly well. And the Witcher franchise itself, coming to Netflix, has had its wobbles, which does lead to some concern. But let's just take another franchise, a more recent franchise, first and see how that was completely messed up. 
The CW have a big problem when it comes to their superhero franchises at the moment. They can't seem to get them above 1.5 million, and I'm talking that as a maximum, below a million for some of them. Why is that? Their audience demographic is split 50-50, male to female, and superheroes are exceedingly hot and will most likely appeal more to a male than a female audience, but... The latest one, Batwoman, is female, and therefore you can also try and bring in the female audience too. So why did the trailer for Batwoman bomb so terribly badly? Well, you just had to watch it to see why. The main character, Kathy Kane, was just full of entitlement and jealousy and envy and misantry. It was a miserable trailer to watch, and I think the reason to explain this is right here. You see, I really can't stop watching the Batwoman trailer. As a Jewish lesbian, I'm beyond proud to see a character like myself on TV, and even more lucky to be writing for her. So in essence, the writer has written herself into the role. Instead of identifying with who their target audience is, or how to make an entertaining show, something that people would love to tune in and watch, her narcissism took over. She, as a Jewish lesbian, decided to write herself into television. I wanted to see myself on TV. I wrote myself in. And therefore, that character has all of her flaws. Her envy, her entitlement, her misantry, it's all there for people to see. And this is what happens when you write from an agenda perspective. You are failing your target audience. So, let's get back to The Witcher, because that is what, after all, this video is about. Where did they start to go wrong when it came to the series? In June of last year, Lauren Hisrich, who is the showrunner of the Witcher series and has an impressive resume behind her, tweeted out this, which was the writers for the Witcher series showing their support for the immigration issue that was going on in America. Now, this was a very contentious issue. And at the uh, bottom of it, they show a picture of them holding up various signs of support however they made a cardinal sin and the cardinal sin was they attached the hashtag of the witcher and they politicized and weaponized the witcher for their own personal cause now this is something they should never do why this was a very contentious issue and this was affiliating the witcher with their political ideology and therefore if you felt differently if you had conflicting opinions whether they are right or wrong is utterly irrelevant these people were saying this is the witcher's stance this is our stance and if you weren't part of that you could very much feel excluded and also want to exclude yourself once you see their political stance. You should never politicise your franchise. Your franchise is there for entertainment purposes only. Now, if she, on her own, Lauren, wanted to give her support for this, it should have been done as a personal tweet, not affiliated with the television show whatsoever. That is absolutely her right. But to politicise and weaponise The Witcher for political reasons absolutely not and she rightly came under heavy fire from people now things did die down for a while until casting choices suddenly started to come out now you're always going to have people that are going to debate whether or not they made the correct choice in certain characters whether or not you thought henry cavill was a good choice for Geralt, i personally do i think henry cavill's got a lot of uh, personality and charisma about him he just hasn't been allowed to let that out uh, with the superman and justice league series Casting such a young Yennefer, only 23 years of age, 
Yes, that's got me questioning. However, I've recently watched the Umbrella Academy and probably the person that stole the show was the young teenage boy that was playing a 56-year-old man, which was just brilliant. He carried it off. So yeah, actors are actors. They act. And so sure, maybe she does have the chops to carry that through. But it was particularly the casting of Siri that raised some eyebrows as details came out that they wanted a BAME character, which means black, Asian, multicultural, ethnic, or something along those lines, i.e. they weren't looking for a white person. And of course, Siri is white in the franchise. Now, I believe that you do have to respect certain elements of a franchise full on. And when it comes to the main characters of a series that has been uh, set f for so long now, uh, I do think you need to adhere to what those characters are, whether they're white, black, straight, gay. I do think you have to hit those correct beats. I don't, however, agree with this person here, uh, who said, all hope for the Witcher Netflix series. This is in no way resembles Fringello Vigo, who is a woman from Toussaint. Because when it comes to fringe characters, I think you have a little bit more leeway. We do live in a multicultural world. And the target audience for The Witcher is going to be whoever wants to watch it. And so, sure, I do think there are times where you can sort of blur over uh, when it comes to a fringe character. that You don't have to stick as close to the source material as necessary as long as the main characters have been portrayed in their correct light. I mean, I wouldn't expect Daniel Craig to play Black Panther. Would you? No, but when it comes to these side characters, sure, you can you can play with them, you can diversify it a bit, and I don't think it's going to have any major effect on the series whatsoever. So there are times where you have to respect the source material. I think there are absolutely times when you can be a bit more lenient with the source material. But when it came to Siri, well, it looked like they did listen to people and it was cast by a 17-year-old white girl. So the character is as she pretty much is in the actual series itself. With a little victory scored, people thought things did go quiet once more and for a longer period of time. But a couple of days ago, some images started to emerge of the first look, and these are leaked images, they're not official images, of the Nilfgaardian soldiers. And as we can see, there's a lot here to be desired in how they actually appear. Now, this is how a Nilfgaardian soldier <laughs> looks like in the Witcher franchise. So you can see that there is an, a considerable difference between the look of the OG source material and the television material. Now, one thing that we don't have is context, okay? So we don't know the context of these outfits. First and foremost, uh, are these soldiers maybe part of an elite force? And this is uh, their sort of uniform, this elite force uniform, because they are in a forest and it looks like they could blend in. So it could be some sort of camouflage medieval camouflage first sort of attempts at that uh, maybe something's going to happen to them in post-production although that does seem a little unlikely if you were going to create armor surely it would be much cheaper to actually make the armor itself than to cgi it on or to have some sort of special effects applied to them afterwards that does seem very unnecessary indeed and with the nilf guardians of course being so grandiose in their look it does sort of raise questions as to why they would potentially stray so far from the source material now i tweeted to lauren earlier today to see whether or not we could get an explanation whether or not this was a, a unique set of guards or whether or not this was going to be the general look of the nilf guardian army but let's just say for argument's sake 
it is. This is the standard look. Why stray so far from the source material? I mean, regular armor would look great, would look absolutely fine, and, and this kind of looks a little bit silly. So although it's not a deal breaker, and I'm not trying to turn this into a deal breaker at all, it once again raises questions, questions which probably shouldn't have to be asked in the first place. So let's just collect everything together. When you're creating your own franchise, you can go nuts. You can create people exactly how you want them to be. Male, female, white, black, straight, gay. You can create your own universe and expand on it as you will. When you're given the reins of an existing franchise, however, you have a duty, a responsibility to be respectful, not only to that franchise, but to the fan base of that franchise. Why? Because you wouldn't even have an opportunity to create a film or be a showrunner of a television show if it wasn't for that fan base making this material so popular. And therefore you do have a duty to not only cater to the normie audience, but you also have a duty to cater for the fan base audience. When you try and push your own politics onto something, you are asking for trouble. You are asking to alienate people. You are literally forcing that upon them. When you try and virtue signal by saying, hey, let's take this character and then let's cast them through a BAME uh, modicum, then you are being disingenuous to not only the source material, but as I said, you are virtue signaling. You are just trying to tick a box for ticking a box's sake. You do have an opportunity once the main characters have been cast to have, I think, that flexibility. And people will let you get away uh, with that. And that can allow you to bring in uh, other ethnicities, etc. to diversify that cast. And the world itself, with everyone that you meet, people who may be brand new to the series who are created specifically for the TV show, etc., to put them into the world as well. But when you start writing for yourself, and when you don't write for your true audience out there, well, you get a Batwoman situation where somebody is so narcissistical that they literally implant themselves into a character because they want to see themselves represented their ego is so huge their um entitlement is is so large that they will quite happily compromise a character compromise a franchise just to be self-serving i really hope that the Witcher series is going to be great. I want nothing more than success for this show because I love this series, I love this franchise, and the more series I can get of The Witcher, the better for me. The more entertained I am, the more invested I'll be to see more, which means I will maintain my subscription to Netflix, etc., etc. All you have to do is create that product for the fan base create that product for the normie to drag them in as well just keep your own political agendas and your own narcissism and your own virtue signaling out of it because it has no part in this sort of entertainment whatsoever so there we go i hope you enjoyed the vid if you did do get a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel follow me on social media and twitch for live streaming links they're in the description box down below and i'll be back with some more stuff very soon you take care bye for now